In this video, we're going to do the second example of real-world applications of the normal distribution. We're told the weights of steel sheets produced by a factory are known to be normally distributed with a mean of 32.5 kilograms and standard deviation of 2.2 kilograms. In part eight, we need to find the percentage of sheets that weigh less than 30 kilograms. So let's write this out. The weights follow a normal distribution with a mean of 32.5 and a variance of 2.2 squared. So that's what we have. What we're interested in in the first part is the percentage of sheets that weigh less than 30 kilograms. So we can write it out and we're looking for now less than 30. So that's what we have. What we want to do is convert this to the standard normal. We've seen in plenty of videos now that Z will be equal to W minus mu divided by sigma, or if you like, W minus a mean over the standard deviation. That will allow us to transform this to the standard normal, and we can obtain a value when we do that. So what we're now looking for then is, and we're going to sub in here Z, Z being less than 30, we take 30, we subtract away from this now 32.5, and we divide by the standard deviation which is 2.2. So let me put this in the calculator and we'll find that value. So let's do that, 30 minus 32.5 and we will now divide by 2.2. This is gonna give us now minus 25 over 22. That's gonna give me minus 1.136 and so on and so forth. In this particular course, we round this to two decimal places. So what we're gonna do then is negative 1.14. So what we're now looking at then is Z being less than negative 1.14. So let's draw a quick sketch. You don't have to draw a sketch, might help though. Let's put this up. What we'll have, something looking like this. So we're interested now in the area trapped under the curve to the left of this line. So let's put that on, 1.14. So we've got this area just here. From our work previously, we saw that if we looked at this, and the way I like to think about it is around the other side, we're gonna have a normal curve. We're gonna have this positive value here at 1.14, and we have the area trapped under the curve to the right of that. Our table, our standard normal table, will give us this area trapped here, and that area is phi of 1.14. Therefore, all we need to do to find our value here is one minus phi of 1.14. That makes sense. If you just have a look at what we're after, we're after this sliver, that's the same as that one. Our table will give us this area right here, so if we do one minus that value, we will find that. So let's put that in a calculator. So we're going to do 1 minus phi of 1.14. So let's find phi of 1.14. Where's 1.14? There we go, 1.14, so 8729. So let's subtract from that uh, 0.8729, and we will end up now with 0 0.1271. So 1271, so let's write that there. What we end up with now is the following. Let's write here, uh, 0 point, in fact, let's write here, we're going to have 0 0.1271. Let's just check that was right. There we go. Now, what we want to give is a percentage. So this isn't the answer. We need to make that a percentage. So we can say now, oh, don't, don't want to do all of that, do I? Let's get rid of just that bit. I now need to write this as a percentage. So rounding this to three significant figures as a percentage, this is going to be 12 0.7%, okay? So if we get this value, it's gonna be 12.7%. Bob requires sheets that weigh between 31.6 kilograms and 34.8 kilograms. We need to find the percentage of sheets produced that satisfy Bob's requirements. So we can write this using a double inequality. And initially, we can simply state that we want the weight to be between 30. 1.6 and 34.8. All I'm going to do is make the substitution and I'm going to stick Z in the middle and what we'll have now, Z will be greater than 31.6, this is what I'm subbing in here, 31.6 minus 32.5 divided by 2.2 and then the other side we're going to have Z less than 
minus 32.5 and divide this by 2.2. So let's get some values and then we can rewrite those and tidy them up. So now we will have z in the middle. Let's put z and we'll put that greater to one value and less than the next. So let's wipe that for a calculator. So first one is going to be 31.6 minus 32.5 and we're going to divide that now by the standard deviation which is 2. We end up with negative now, negative 9 over 22, which is going to give me negative 0 0.409 and so on. So I'm going to round this to two decimal places and I'm going to have negative 0 0.41. Okay, let's do the next one. And if we get a bit cheeky, we can just go straight back into this and just switch this over. So all I want to do now is swap this. Is that going to be any quicker? Uh, I don't know, maybe. So 40, uh, 30, no, it's not, is it? my useless skills. Okay, let's do that. So 23 over 22. So we need to round this now to two decimal places. So it's going to be 1.0 and we'll have 5. So 1.05. So drawing a little sketch, let's have a look at the area that we're interested in. So let's put 1.05 just here and let's put negative 0.41 just here. So we are interested in the area under the curve trapped between these two lines. We're after all of this. Way back in one of the first videos, I showed you a quick way of doing this. If this is 1.05 and this is now negative 0.41, what we can say then is the area trapped between the two is going to be given now as phi of 1.05 minus 1 minus phi of positive 0.41. If you're unsure on that, please do review the videos or... If you want to spend a little time, it should make sense of why that works. So let's now do that. What we want then is phi of 1.05. Okay, so let's find phi of 1.05. So there we go, 8531. So 0.8531. And what we're now going to do is subtract away 1 minus, and what we want now is phi of the next value, which we had, was going to be now 4.1. So let's look at phi of 0 0.41. And that's going to be down here somewhere. There we go, 416591. So let's put that in. So what we'll have, we'll subtract away from this, 0.6591. Uh, let's put that there, that's what we want. And this will give us a value. So what we end up with then is 26 whatever, whatever. And we end up with 0 point now, 0 point, um, 0.5122. So let's write that in. Let's put that in. And that will give us a value. So what we're going to get then is 0. Uh, it doesn't really work with white, does it? Let's change that. 0 0.5122. So we want this as a percentage. So this as a decimal, all we need to do is write it as a percentage. So we can say now 51.2%. And that is accurate to three significant figures. So there's our answer. So all we've done is applied a basic transformation to the standard normal. Um, there will be some scope for alternative answers depending on how you've rounded it. But in general, if you go with the idea, in particular with this course, that you round the values to two decimal places, then find the corresponding values and work with those, you won't go too far wrong.